Over the years, scientists have developed intricate methods and experimented with genetic material to achieve the favorable qualities they want in plants, animals, and even humans. So in this video, I will examine the basics of genetic engineering and some of the major applications of this technology. So if you're interested in this topic, keep watching. So what exactly is genetic engineering? So simply put, it is the deliberate manipulation of genes to alter the characteristics of an organism. So basically, scientists tamper with the genetic material of cells. So what happens is that genetic engineering involves techniques used to insert the genetic material, which is in most cases the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. So they take that DNA from one organism and they can insert it into the DNA of another. So this gives scientists the ability to change and improve the nature of cells. So they can change the characteristics of cells because they are manipulating the DNA material. So remember, DNA is found in the nucleus of cells and it actually controls the characteristics of organisms. So if scientists can tamper and play with the DNA and change up stuff like that, they can change the nature, the characteristics, the traits of the particular cells and therefore the organism. So this is known as biotechnology. So this simply means that scientists, they can utilize biological processes such as this and be able to apply it to industrial and medicinal, agricultural purposes. So we're going to go into that in more details when we look at the applications of genetic engineering. So theoretically speaking, if a scientist was to take certain genes from the cocoa seeds that make chocolate and then insert it into the cells of tomato seeds, that tomato plant may be able to grow to produce tomatoes with similar characteristics to chocolate. So imagine that, having chocolate flavored tomatoes. So you have the same taste as chocolate, but with the benefits, the qualities, the nutritional nourishment of tomatoes. So you see here why scientists like to tamper and manipulate genes. It's all about getting organisms such as the animals, plants, getting them to have certain qualities and characteristics that are desirable. So how does genetic engineering actually work? What really happens? So what happens is that the scientists utilize a vector and a vector is simply a virus or a bacterial plasmid. So that is the genetic material from those microorganisms that are actually used to transfer a piece of DNA from the cell of one organism into another organism's genome, which would be the whole cell. So remember that DNA is the universal genetic material. So deoxyribonucleic acid, so that is the universal genetic material that can be used to make transfers between different species. So that is why with genetic engineering, we can have genetic material from one species being inserted into the cells of another species. So in this process, the concept of gene cloning is important to note because that selected piece of DNA, that is going to be responsible for producing a particular type of protein. So remember in the first video in this series, we looked at how DNA and genes and chromosomes, how they're all connected. So the gene is the specific part of the DNA that would code for a particular protein. So when that selected gene of the DNA has been incorporated into the whole cell, the genetic information can then replicate, in other words, make copies of itself as the whole cell multiplies. So we're going to look at this in a little more details here now. So here we have gene cloning with different vectors. So we've seen how it happens with both the bacteria and virus being the vectors. So in this first one here, the bacteria is the, the vector. So we can see the plasmid DNA from the bacteria. That is going to be used to form recombinant DNA with the foreign gene. So the foreign gene will represent the gene of selected interest. So that, this, this would be the gene that would be carrying the desired um, information. 
so the gene that would code for the desired information so that is going to be merged with the the dna plasmid the plasmid dna of the bacterium and here we're going to have the recombinant dna being formed and then placed back into the bacterial cell the whole cell and then therefore as the whole cell divides and it multiplies you're going to have more and more of that particular gene making copies of itself through this process of the cells being uh, multiplying so with the virus is the same concept here so we have the virus you're taking out the viral dna and that vector so remember the vector is the viral dna in this case and you're going to insert the foreign gene so this is the gene of interest and you can insert that into the, the vector the viral dna so you're now forming recombinant dna similar to the the one with the bacteria and then you're going to insert that into the whole cell the whole cell multiplies therefore causing the genetic material to also make copies of of itself so this is the basis this is the foundation of genetic engineering okay so now we have a basic understanding of how genetic engineering works let's look at some of the applications of genetic engineering so some of the common applications would include commercial production of medicine such as insulin, other hormones, antibiotics, vaccines, enzymes, all of these are actually produced using the process of genetic engineering. And I'm going to actually focus on the production of insulin as an example of this. And secondly, disease treatment. So using gene therapy is another application of genetic engineering in terms of treating genetic disorders, genetic diseases. And then thirdly, agriculture and food production so the production of transgenic crops and animals which are also known as GMOs or genetically modified organisms so I'll look at one example for each of these applications of genetic engineering so first of all one of the key commercial products of genetic engineering in medicine is insulin so being able to produce insulin on a mass scale is extremely important because insulin is in high demand for diabetics. So instead of utilizing cows and pigs and extracting the insulin from these animals, the scientists are able to make insulin on a larger scale in a much quicker fashion using the concept of genetic engineering. So what, what happens is we take the bacterium so that bacterium is acting as the vector. So remember, I explained the vector, the use of the vector. So it's providing the plasmid DNA. And then we're going to use the DNA in the human pancreas cell. So this DNA, this is the actual DNA of interest. So this is the DNA that is going to be responsible for carrying the insulin producing gene. So you're going to remove that. You're going to extract that from the human pancreas cell. And then that is going to be merged with the plasmid DNA from the bacterium. So here we're seeing the recombinant DNA being formed. So then once that recombinant DNA is formed with the desired gene, the insulin producing gene, then that recombinant DNA will be reinserted into the bacterium, therefore forming the recombinant bacterium. So this, this bacterium will basically be allowed to multiply in a fermentation tank and therefore as it is multiplying so remember bacteria multiply very very quickly so their reproductive cycle is very fast so as they multiply in this fermentation tank you're having more of the bacteria produced and therefore more of the human insulin recombinant dna as you're seeing here so because the bacteria would be carrying this human insulin gene as you can see inserted into the bacterial um, plasmid then therefore we can have the actual insulin which is the protein product of the gene so then that can be extracted and purified to actually form the insulin which would be used by the diabetics to treat their condition so this is just one key example of genetic engineering in the commercial production of medicine so the next example of genetic engineering I want to focus on is disease treatment by gene therapy. So this would be very valuable for treating diseases that are hereditary such as 
cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, hemophilia, just to name a few. So cystic fibrosis, the problem with that is that you have a buildup of mucus and it tends to affect the lungs and the digestive system. And then with sickle cell anemia, we know that the shape of the red blood cells are sickle shape rather than biconcave. And then with hemophilia, you have a problem with blood clotting. So these are just three genetic diseases that can certainly benefit from gene therapy. So how does the gene therapy actually work? So it takes on a similar concept to what I would have gone through previously in terms of how genetic engineering works. So here we see that the cells of the patient are removed. So they're removed from the patient and then in the lab, a virus, remember the virus can act as a vector. So the virus is going to alter, is going to be altered so that it cannot reproduce. You don't want the virus to be reproducing in this case. It's just simply going to be behaving as a vector. And the gene of interest, so this would be the corrective gene. So normally with genetic diseases, there's a problem with the gene that is causing the particular issues with the genetic disease. So we need to correct the faulty gene with the corrective gene, the proper gene. So here is what is gonna happen. So that corrective gene is gonna be inserted into the virus. As you can see, we have this recombinant DNA now farming. And then this altered virus will then be mixed with the cells from the patient. So those cells that were removed from the patient, you're gonna insert that information from the virus, so the recombinant DNA. So you have the virus placed into the cells and the cells from the patient become genetically altered. So this is where the genetic engineering comes in. So it's all about making sure that these cells are able to produce the particular genes, the desired genes that would actually correct the particular genetic disease. So once the cells from the patient has become genetically altered, the altered cells are going to be injected back into the patient and these genetically altered cells will then produce the desired protein or hormone. So whatever it is we're trying to correct should be corrected when these cells are replaced or placed back into the patient. So that is just the basics of gene therapy. So it's all about correcting the gene that is faulty, that is resulting in these, these diseases for instance. So we need to get rid of the faulty gene and be able to make the cells that are going to produce the correct gene, the gene that will produce the particular protein. So in the case of cystic fibrosis, it would correct the problem with the buildup of mucus. In sickle cell anemia, it would allow the red blood cells to form as normal, nice and round. And then with hemophilia, you would have that blood clotting occurring. So these are just some of the examples in which gene therapy can be applied. So the last example of genetic engineering I want to focus on is in agriculture and food production. So one of the key reasons for employing genetic engineering in this area is really to help crops to develop a resistance against insects and disease, um, have an increased growth rate, yield and size of crops. So we know farmers, for instance, would definitely prefer a larger yield and some larger size crops to go on the market. And then of course, superior nutritional value. This is one of the key reasons genetic engineering is employed in agriculture. And this specific example I have with the golden rice, this, this genetically modified crop was really intended to provide the nutrient vitamin A for those, those um, poor poverty stricken countries that did not have the access uh, to foods with vitamin A. So they were looking to incorporate that vitamin A, particularly in the form of beta carotene. So that's what's given the, the rice this golden appearance. So they were looking to improve the nutritional value of rice. So we know rice is a starchy food, but in addition to the starch, they wanted to incorporate the nutrient vitamin A for those um, those countries that weren't getting the, the nutrients, the vitamin A that they should have been getting. So the superior nutritional value, that's one of the key reasons um, that genetic engineering would be employed. And in addition to 
nutritional value, we have the longer length of freshness. So this improves the shelf life of crops. So for instance, bananas that would typically go bad after a few days, they may be able to be extended in terms of the freshness. So they last longer. So that is definitely a, a pro. And then in terms of animals such as pigs and cows, they can pr produce meat with less fat, more lean meat. So everyone prefers more meat compared to fat. So that's definitely important. And then we can, the farmers can reduce the need of using chemicals such as fertilizers and pesticides. So these are just some of the points relating to why genetic engineering would be employed in agriculture and some of the benefits that you're seeing here. So speaking of benefits, I think it's good to know the pros and the cons of genetic engineering. So like many things, there's a good side and then there's a bad side. So in terms of the advantages, as I would have just went through in agriculture and then earlier medicine, we see how useful genetic engineering is in improving the quality, the nutrients of crops, increasing food production and having longer shelf life, increased resistance to pests. All of that is definitely beneficial in agriculture. And then as it relates to medicine, we saw how important it is to be able to mass produce insulin and then the promising treatment of gene therapy. So there's the good side to genetic engineering, but then there's also the bad side disadvantages. So with any type of technology, it can be imprecise. There are errors that can occur. And when these errors occur, they can actually produce dangerous pathogenic organisms, which can cause new diseases. So that's definitely not a good thing. So they can lead to human health risks, especially as it relates to the genetically modified foods. So you can have new allergies, inflammatory responses. So these are just some of the things that can happen as it relates to genetically modified foods. And then it can disturb the natural ecological system. So if, if the scientists are tampering with the genes of, of animals and plants, it can affect the, the food chains, the, the, the ecosystems. So these are just some of the points um, as it relates to the disadvantages. So there's the good side and the, the bad side of genetic engineering. And then of course we have the social and the ethical concerns, many which would connect to some of the disadvantages that I touched on. So one concern is genetic manipulation of animals and plants. Many people think it is wrong. Then there are the animal activists that will find the whole process of using animals, you know, testing on animals. They think it's definitely inhumane. And designer babies. Now this has been a very controversial topic a very controversial theme in terms of these scientists are trying to play God and selecting certain genes that would produce certain characteristics in babies. So it's allowing parents to be able to create their own perfect baby. So if they want a baby with blue eyes or green eyes, straight hair, blonde hair, whatever the case is, they, they are employing the genetic engineering to create the babies of their preference. So people do not agree with that. Many people do not agree with that. And then, of course, the genetically modified animal organs. So this is as it relates to creating, um, using animal organs to transplant into humans. So the genetically modified organs, this can pose an issue as it becomes, as it relates to like, religious laws and so forth. Because imagine if you had an animal organ, such as a pig organ, being placed into your body. So there, there's some concerns about that for sure. And then with the food stuff, being able to have the food stuff label is extremely important. So anytime you go into the supermarket, it's something that's genetically modified. If it's a product that has undergone genetic engineering, it should be labeled. So this will help prevent any um, associated health risks, any allergies and so forth. So that is just some of the points I wanted to discuss on genetic engineering. So hopefully you found this um, video helpful. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.